be Dr. Uh, Ramaya Buri, and uh, is an ex-professor of biochemistry from All Indian Institute of Medical Science, with special interest in vitiligo and decapeptide to treat vitiligo. Professor Devendra Prasad for inviting me to this presentation. I joined the All Indian Institute of Medical Sciences many, many years ago, and I also retired many, many years ago. The whole thing started with the idea that myself being affected by the disorder, what is it I can do as a biochemist? The first thing we try to do is to grow the melanocytes in culture from untreated vitiligo subjects and compare with the normal melanocytes from normal individuals. That led to the observations for the first time. How do I go to the next one? We do a stop. It's simply that. Okay. Now, the melanocytes cultured from newborn human foreskins grow faster and can be passed to 60 or more population doublings. In contrast to those obtained from adult skins, which have longer doubling time and can be passed only three to four times. Melanocytes derived from uninvolved and perilesional skin of vitiligo subjects manifest a decreased seeding capacity, grow after a long latent period, or don't grow at all, and can't be passaged. In contrast, in melanocytes obtained from treated individuals with actively repigmenting vitiligo patches, these defects are completely corrected. This is the basis. Doesn't go. Can someone help him? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm fumbling here. Yeah, he's coming. How he's do coming. I control it, please? He's coming, sir. Someone is coming. This is the one I pressed. Hey, oh, this, press, press, press. this is all. Okay. Hello. So please continue. Yeah. So the first thing we have done after these observations, we have taken the serum from the successfully pigmented individuals, and they were treated with poor, and compared with the serum, fetal cop serum, serum from vitiligo untreated subjects, normal human beings, and serum from repigmenting vitiligo individuals. And you could see the one, the top one, RHS. It, this serum helps in the growth of melanocytes much, much better than the rest of the other things. At that time, how poor books in repigmenting vitiligo subjects was believed to be because of reduction of autoantibodies to melanocytes. But this particular observation of serum working far better than the rest when the pigment is coming to the vitiligo patches, indicated to us that there may be involvement of growth factors for the proliferation of melanocytes as an additional cause for repigmentation to occur, in addition to reduction of antibodies to melanocytes. 
So we have made a postulation, growth factor involvement in the repigmentation, no matter why vitiligo occurs, what are the factors. Any agent to treat vitiligo, we believe, then, should possess the following properties, directly or indirectly. Number one, it should stimulate the proliferation of melanocytes. The melanocytes may be lost in vitiligo subjects for a variety of reasons. But even if you remove those causative agents, it won't be sufficient, in my mind, to repigment unless we have growth factors at the same time generated or applied from outside. It should act as a chemotactic and chemokinetic agent because the melanocytes to reach the vitiligo patch should be able to migrate and that is possible only when this particular agent has that capacity. And if it is also a melanogenic agent, it is better that way. And we thought all these properties are present in BFGF, basic fibroblast growth factor, to fit this bill. That's how we made this postulation, and it took a long time from the time we postulated to the development of the treatment for vitiligo using decapeptide. We have developed the animal model for this at the time, like the gentleman before me presented. It was a guinea pig. We chemically depigment the ear lobes of the guinea pigs, two of them. One is used for control. The other is used for treating with this particular decapeptide. We also used internal injection of BFGF to start with, and then with the decapeptide. And when they are successfully repigmenting faster than in control, then we had to think of how to deliver these molecules. And these studies were originally conducted at Ames, New Delhi, biochemistry department, and later, because it involved a lot of money, a Dutch company came forward called Hest Brucardis. And, with the, and they insisted that the study should be done in Amsterdam itself. And Professor Westerhoff and my former student, now Professor Nilupuri, did the studies with my contribution to it. And the rest of the animal experiments were done at Amsterdam Medical Center. And after these studies were done, the, the company was sold to a Japanese company called Emanuchi Europe. And they were not interested in continuing this study after six years of the effort and they gave all the data to me to do whatever I can do with it. By then I retired and I really went from pillar to post to find somebody to help me to do the clinical trials. The drug controller gave me permission to do clinical trial within one month because he happened to be the, an MD student from pharmacology of our institute. But later on, it needs money to do the clinical trials, and I went from many places, and finally I got a company to do that. And we also developed a formulation to deliver this decapeptide and various clinical phases of trials, like phase one and two and phase three were done at various centers in Delhi, Bangalore, Hyderabad and elsewhere, Himalayan Institute of Medical Sciences, Dehradun, where I had the pleasure of getting the help of Professor Devendra Prasad. At the time, he was there as, uh, I don't remember what is his position at the time, but now he's a professor, full professor. After that, 
were applied at various concentrations and finally found 0.1% solution is effective. And these are some of the photographs before and after. I will go quickly. This is a very interesting one on the nose. And when I apply it longer than necessary, it gets hyperpigmented. And interestingly, the white hair in these patches also get uh, pigmented. And now, later on, we did combination therapy because I believe this is a major important observation. We feel it is useful not only by itself on exposure to sun after treatment with the decapeptide topical application, but also with any other modalities of treatment of vitiligo. Because irrespective of the method, as I mentioned, multiplication of melanocytes is a requirement. Negative effectors like reduction of antibodies for melanocytes and other things will be perhaps able to control the progression and the little pigmentation. But if you have a stimulating agent for proliferation of melanocytes, it will always do better, far better. And also with the punch grafts, we have done it. This is all done with uh, the help of Dr. Devendra Prasad with poor soul. And there are cases where when you use poor, not all patches get pigmented. There are some, even after the years of treatment with poor, they don't get pigmented at all. And we have taken such cases and showed in combination with the decapeptide, they do pigment faster. And one of the interesting thing is in the palm, the patch can be seen to be repigmenting with the decapeptide and poor. And same is with the case of corticosteroids, mini pulse therapy, which Professor Kaitan from our institute presented. This is the punch graft. Now I will skip the other things. At present, the license for selling this as a drug was given in 2001, and it is launched in 2004 in the Indian market. And now there are many companies which are selling this decapeptide to treat vitiligo in combination with the other modalities of treatment. Uh, and the names of these brand names are MGH, Melboost, Glendep, Melbill, Melgain is sold in the Indian market for treatment of all types of vitiligo and in combination with other modalities of treatment like tacrolimus, NBUB, PUVA, and minipal steroids. Agonist peptides of BFCF are effective to treat generalized vitiligo, segmental vitiligo. They also work synergistically in combination with PUVA, PUVA soul, resistant to treatment with PUVA, steroids, and with other modalities of treating vitiligo, punch out surgical procedures. I thank particularly all the supervisors of these clinical trials, starting with Professor Devendra Prasad Saini, Department of Dermatology, PGI, Professor A.S. Kumar, Head Department of Dermatology, OYC Hospital, Hyderabad, Professor P. Raman Rao of Vikan the Hospital, Hyderabad, Dr. M. Wahid of Central Research in United Medicine, Hyderabad. He was the one who supplied maximum number of vitiligo volunteers for these trials. Professor C. Rajendran, Professor Elizabeth J. Seelan, and Dr. Sujatha Raj, Dermatology Department, St. George Medical College Hospital, Bangalore, for their supervision and advice 
in conducting these clinical trials. Most of all, I am, I am most grateful to all the volunteers who participated in the clinical trials. Thank you all.